what's up YouTube? Welcome to another video by Ratchets and Wrenches and today I'm going to show you how you can perform a parasitic draw test on your vehicle. Before you go ahead with this test though, you want to make sure you have a good battery and your battery is fully charged. Since symptoms of a parasitic draw and a bad battery are pretty similar, which is, you know, one day you go to start the car, you know, you left your car overnight, maybe over two nights and then you go to start it and you can't start it, you know, it could be your bad battery or it could also be a parasitic draw which has drained your battery. But again, just to make sure you can narrow it down to a parasitic draw, you want to test your battery first. If you don't know how to test your battery, I've already done a video on how you can test your battery using a multimeter and I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video right below here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do before we start the test is to remove the key from the ignition. And also to be on the safe side, you want to turn off your dome light. Okay, next you want to take a quick walk around the car making sure all the doors are closed shut, your trunk is closed, uh, your glove box is closed, and also if you come, if your hood comes with a hood light, make sure you disable that by removing the connector or uh, turning off a switch if you can find it, okay? The point of doing all this is that we want to turn off every light because every, any light that's on, it's going to show as an amp draw when we do our test and if it's just, you know, your dome light and it goes off when you shut your door, then that's not your problem and it's just going to give you a false reading. So you want to make sure all lights are off that are supposed to be off when the car is sitting. Uh, in your garage. Okay, what you want to do next is to remove the negative side of the battery terminal and you can do this test on either side but it's a lot safer to do this on this side since this is the ground side and if you short this out, you know, it's just ground to ground and nothing's gonna uh, get damaged, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do next is turn on our multimeter that we got for five dollars at Harbor Freight and we want to put the settings on 10 amps which is this guy right here and also you want to make sure you put the lead in the right place, which is this, this is right here. Do your most work on your multimeter with the red lead in this place, which is for volts, for resistance, everything else. But for 10 amps, for reading uh, amps, you have to move it to here. What we're going to do next is to bridge the gap between our battery terminal and our battery terminal connector using the test leads of our multimeter. Make sure these, I'm going to be using these alligator clips, uh, but again, make sure these are not touching or also they're not grounded and rest them against the plastic piece of the car if you can, okay? So now we're going to connect this to this battery terminal connector and see what, if uh, we get any readings. Here we go. We got about a 4 amp draw on this car right now and this is not good and it's going to definitely drain our battery. Now what's going to help us narrow, narrow it down to where the, the parasitic draw is coming from is basically find our fuse box. You know, depending on your car, you're going to have a fuse box in the engine bay or on your driver's side, some cars even have one on the passenger side. But we're going to start with this one since it's right here. We're going to put, pull this uh, fuse cover off. Then, basically, you're just going to have to go through each fuse, pull, pull one fuse at a time until this reading goes down uh, to preferably near zero. But even if it jumps down two amps, that means you found a parasitic draw from for whatever component that fuse is uh, controlling. Uh, but there is still another parasitic drop, but usually, you know, there's just one draw and once you remove the fuse that's uh, for that component, uh, you know, your reading goes pretty close to zero, okay? Alright, lucky enough to have one of these fuse pullers. If you don't have one, you can also always use a needle nose pair of need a small needle nose pliers to pull these. So we're just going to get at it, remove one at a time and look at the reading. If it moves, then we find our problem. If not, we'll just go to the next fuse. We just got done pulling all the fuses in this fuse box and none of them, you know, affected the reading we have right now. So we're going to move on to the fuse box that's on the driver's side of this car. But before we open this driver door, we're going to disconnect our multimeter because when you open that driver door, uh, your dome light is going to come on if you didn't turn it off. But also there's uh, lights on your uh, door panel themselves that they could come on. And that amp draw, in addition to the amp draw we currently have, is going to could potentially damage our multimeter. So we're going to disconnect our multimeter, then open our driver's door, and then we're going to disable the door switch that's on this side, okay? Okay, and here's a look at the door switch on this car. And, you know, you need to have, find a ways of pushing this in and holding it there. Or on this case, you know, you could possibly remove the screw and take the switch out and disconnect it if you can. But what I'm going to try to do is just basically use some uh, good strong duct tape to have this stay shut. Now I'm pretty sure this has worked, but if you want to be on the safe side, you can always reconnect your battery and check your dome light. 
Okay, and here's a look at our uh, fuse cover on this side, and I'm just gonna pull this. And there's our fuse box on this driver's side, and here's our uh, diagram for what each fuse is for. Okay, so now we're just gonna do the same thing: start pulling and taking a look at a multimeter. Obviously, it would uh, help greatly if you had a helper, which or someone that could just uh, look at the multimeter while you're pulling these fuses. That way, you don't waste a lot of time going to look at the multimeter every single time you pull a fuse. Okay. And there you have it folks, after removing this 15 amp fuse, our uh, amp draw reading fell way down, uh, pretty much close to zero. And looking at our diagram, we can find out what that fuse is for. And that fuse is for our uh, stop lamps or stop lights, okay? So now let's just put this fuse back in and take, go take a look at our stop lights. Okay, wouldn't you know it, our battery lights are on and they're not supposed to be because no one's pressing on the brake pedal. So, and this is what's causing our parasitic draw in this case. Now this car didn't have a parasitic draw, so I just, you know, put that there against my brake pedal and uh, rested against the seat to make sure the brake lights come on. But this could, could easily happen, and in this case what happens is that your brake light switch comes loose, and therefore your brake lights stay on all the time, and you could probably miss this the first time it happens. You know, you know, you turn off your car, don't take a look at your brakes, don't realize they're still on, and then just walk into your house, next day you can't start the car and you know that's what's causing it. Okay so just a couple pointers before I wrap this video up. Uh, parasitic draws aren't that common. It's usually a bad battery and people mistake that for having a parasitic draw. And you know but the few times that they have that I've experienced them it has uh, had something to do with lights. You know your light switches uh, to be to be exact. Uh, they tend to go bad and then you know different lights stay on when you turn off the car and when they're not supposed to be and you know that causes your battery to drain. Uh, also, if you recently maybe had a small accident, you know, bump a fender bender, maybe one of your uh, lights got damaged, your, uh, many, well, your side marker lights especially, you know, uh, you know, you scrape those uh, the most and now there is a problem with that light, maybe the wires got damaged too and now it's causing a parasitic drop. So you want to check those. Also, if you've done any modifications to your car, if your com car came with uh, some modifications, they tend to go bad more often. Uh, than not, so you want to look into those as well. Okay, so with that said, hope this video helps you out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.